Happy February, students. I'm Stacy Perkins, Vice President of Global Marketing for Legacy Education Alliance, and I'm happy to be joining you once again to bring you this year's second edition of Legacy Connection, your connection to Legacy's most shared and engaging content for the month of February. Spanning from real estate and foreclosure investment to financial markets and currencies across the globe, I'm so glad you could join us. In this month's edition, we're covering derivatives, futures, and options. The difference between these investment choices and the benefit that each one provides. We will be joined once again by financial expert Mark Justice, who will transmit an important message regarding market confidence, the president, and his Twitter account, and we'll cap things off with Legacy Education Alliance's CEO, Anthony Humpage, who has a quick tip on how to potentially benefit from certain changes in consumer confidence that have been taking place in the past few weeks. Let's get to it. So what exactly are derivatives? As we explain in our recent blog article found on My Elite Portal, derivatives are a type of financial instrument whose value is derived from the value of another underlying asset. Specifically, this means that the value offered by derivatives is based on the price changes of another security to which its performance is tied to. They are available on both the over-the-counter market and on various exchanges. Though a tricky instrument to master, derivatives offer many benefits such as hedging risk and trade speculation. This is where options come in. A type of derivative, options represent a contract between two investors providing the buyer of the option the opportunity to purchase the underlying assets at a predetermined price at some point in the future. This basically represents an opposing bet by each party about the future of a security. Speaking of futures, what exactly are they? Like options, a futures contract is also a type of derivative that represents a deal to buy an underlying asset at the current price at some point in time in the future. The main difference is that options provide the right to purchase, whereas futures provide an obligation to purchase. Going back to trade speculation, how exactly should traders react when global influencers such as Donald Trump send out cryptic messages about corporations on social media? Financial expert Mark Justice offers his take. Mark? And so what happens when Trump tweets about a company, when he tweets about Lockheed Martin, when he tweets about Toyota, when he tweets about a company, what has happened is that the, a stock will be between these two areas. And the tweet will impact the, the price movement for a few hours or that day and create movement within that range, because we have our resistance and we have our support range, and it will move between that range, but it does nothing to break out of that range. It's fluff, it's rhetoric, it's not actionable policy. He's the president of the United States, make no mistake. His tweet can give us insight, and the market takes notice, but it's not the same thing as when he signs an executive order. The executive order, I, I, even in today's age, <laughs> Twitter doesn't have as much power as an executive order. So it will send the price of that stock between this range, the high and the low range. The tweet can create dramatic headlines. Well, Lockheed Martin fell, Toyota fell, X company fell. And you'll see that headline and you'll be like, oh, Trump's negatively. Remember that there's so much noise that happens in the stock market that really doesn't matter in the long term. And Trump's tweets are, until we see any evidence otherwise, are a lot of noise. Thanks, Mark. So next time you're thinking about selling your shares based on 140 characters, remember to curb your market sentiment Put your thinking hat on and take a stab at technical analysis where the real data can be gathered and acted upon. There are, however, very real signals to pay attention to for gaining insight into future market movements. Mark alluded to executive orders. There are also policies that a president vows to enact while on the campaign trail. Well, so far, Trump seems to be keeping his word on many of those promises. In fact, the rate in which he has enacted them is almost unprecedented which has also caused a drastic shift in consumer confidence to take place. So, from an investor point of view, is there a way to capitalize on this shift? Legacy's CEO, Anthony Humpage, weighs in. Anthony? Hello. Thanks, Stacy. It's Anthony Humpage again, CEO of Legacy Education Alliance. 
Um, I'm talking to you right now in about the middle of January, uh, right before the presidential inauguration. Uh, and I had uh, quite a drive in the car the other day and uh, was listening to satellite radio and there's an interview with a gentleman by the name of Jeffrey Gundlach. Uh, you may or may not be aware of him, but he manages a hedge fund called Double Line Capital. Um, hundred billion dollars of assets under management. Um, certainly a very respected investor and commentator. And Jeffrey was talking about just how incredible the change in business and consumer confidence has been since the presidential election and how, frankly, nobody really saw it coming. How can you use that to your advantage? I'll give you one suggestion. Um, as we see confidence generally rising in the US, a likely consequence is that people who have been out of the housing market, uh, perhaps renting, uh, specifically younger people who may have put off purchasing because uh, they've been wary about being able to, to afford their payments, um, may be starting to think about moving in to home ownership. So one strategy for us as real estate investors might be to look at perhaps rehabbing starter homes where we're um, offering homes at perhaps the lower ends of the market, but decent houses that people who want to be first time buyers uh, could get into. That strategy may not work everywhere in the US, but I think there's probably going to be a few cities and metro areas where it will. And that's just one suggestion that we think might help strengthen your financial future as a real estate investor. Hey, this is Anthony Humpage, CEO of Legacy Education Alliance. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Anthony. The demand for affordable housing remains strong, and I want to remind you that we have a wealth of information on rehabbing, flipping, and other similar real estate investment strategies on My Elite Portal. You can access all of those resources by clicking below. I'd like to end this segment with a quote from J.D. Rockefeller. Don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. This risk-reward scenario that Rockefeller speaks of can be tilted in your favor through a continuous search for knowledge. While you may be comfortable with the status quo, remember that there's always more to learn and more to achieve. I'm Stacy Perkins with Legacy Education Alliance. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Legacy Connection.